On today's show, we're looking at the best new first-person shooters of 2018. Plus, after 90 days with the iPhone 10, is it worth it? Let's find out. It's time for Unbox Daily. Welcome to Unbox Daily. I'm your host, Jason. A pleasure to see your shining faces. As always, we're bringing you some of the best videos from the world of product reviews and unboxing videos. Any thoughts or questions? Leave me that comment or tweet at us at Get Unboxed. So it's been a little over three months since the release of the iPhone X, sometimes called iPhone X. I personally like iPhone X better, but we're gonna go with both for today's show. So the question remains, is it worth getting this top of the line thousand dollar phone? Well, Carl Conrad is here to give us his thoughts as to whether this Apple flagship is worth your time. Once you're into the iPhone, the experience is very fluid, just like an iPhone should be. The gestures are perfect. The swipe up to get back to the home screen is perfect. It makes sense, it works, and now it's intuitive. But there are still some things that aren't perfect. So say an app is frozen, it happens from time to time, I wanna close it. Before, I would just double tap on the home button and I could swipe up an app. Now I need to long press on the screen to bring up multitasking and press the tiny little red close button on the top left but that's just what happens when you don't have the physical button and you need to use a gesture to take care of it. In this instance, it's not really the best. Now, admittedly, I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy, but I'll be the first to admit Carl's absolutely right. Force quitting in the new iOS setup on the iPhone 10, not my favorite thing. Still, the phone's got a lot of other great qualities and I remain a fan. Speaking of great cameras, we've got a whole new set of rumors for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now, we mention this because, of course, there's lots of rumors about Samsung's line of phones this year, but the Note 9 is interesting because it sounds like it's gonna have a phenomenal camera. Now, here to give us a drill down on all the rumors about the Note 9, we've got Shane Starks from Droid Modder X, who's going through all the different rumors and letting us know what's believable and what's probably worth ignoring. The Note 9 may be totally different with no bezels whatsoever on the front of the phone. If Samsung's able to pull this off in time for the Galaxy Note 9, it would mean that Samsung would have the best body to screen ratio on the market hands down. Another thing that we are expecting to see for the Galaxy Note 9 is 3D facial scanning functionality. This would mean that facial scanning on the Galaxy Note 9 would be just as good as Face ID on the iPhone 10. Hopefully with the all new capabilities, you'll be able to enter your phone faster than ever, not have having to find the fingerprint scanner on the back. Great camera, bezel-less display, and a back fingerprint reader. Heck, if even half these rumors are true, the Note 9 is going to be a phenomenal phone. Now, with all the new consoles that have come out recently, we know that 2018 is going to be a great year for gaming, and particularly in the genre of first-person shooters. And here to give us some thoughts on what the top 20 games of 2018 might be for FPS, we've got the guys over at Game Ranks who are letting us know what they're excited about this year. Number 14 is Deep Rock Galactic, which kind of reminds me of a combination of Left 4 Dead and No Man's Sky, which I know sounds ridiculous, but it's procedurally generated, mineable environments that you do four-player, fast-paced, arcade-type co-op shooting in as well. Frankly, this is the spin on the No Man's Sky type game that I didn't know I wanted very badly, but I do. Along with Deep Rock Galactic, I am super excited for the possibility of a new System Shock game. If you're not familiar, these are the basis for the Bioshock games, which were hugely popular in their heyday. And I gotta tell you, if there's a new one coming out in 2018, I'm gonna be first in line to get it. If you're not aware, Marquez Brownlee is now doing a monthly segment on his channel where he's answering questions from his audience in his now patented Ask MKBHD. And this month, he's got Austin Evans with him to answer some of those pressing questions that I know we all have for them. When was the last time a tech item blew your mind? Blew my mind? Like actually blew your mind. My answer is in the frame right now. Yeah? Autopilot. Not necessarily okay. like the actual car, but uh, there is something weird about when you're driving, being mm -hmm. able to actually take your hands off the wheel and actually do something else. Yeah. And I, I was messing with my parents in this, picked them up from the airport oh, no. during a holiday. And I, my sister was in on it, but she's like, hey, can you grab something from the back seat? And uh, I'm an autopilot. I just kind of casually reach back. <laughs> and the car, and they're in the back seat like, what is he doing? And just in case you thought that's all the news that's fit to print, Austin also did his own version of an Ask Austin with MKBHD. It's almost like they recorded them at the same time. Finally, if you haven't heard, Apple is finally releasing the HomePod. This is their Echo and Google Home competitor. And I gotta tell you, after waiting all this time, I'm really interested to see what the final product looks like. Well, we've got Apple Insider here who's giving us all the pertinent product details you need to know. 
The HomePod has an array of seven tweeters, each with their own individual drivers, custom amplifiers, and transducers. Each tweeter comes custom designed with a precision acoustic horn that directionally focuses sound. For comparison, the $130 Google Home has a single speaker, and Amazon's $100 Echo has two speakers. Meanwhile, the $50 and under Echo Dot has just a single speaker. The HomePod also has advanced sensors that detect the space it's in, so the speaker knows when it's next to a wall or in a corner. I gotta tell you, I'm an Apple fanboy, this is well established, but I don't know that I'm in love with the HomePod. I'm gonna have to wait and see it in person to really make a decision. After all, Google and Alexa, they're pretty awesome. And that's it for our show. Thanks as always for joining. Be sure to check out previous episodes over at Unbox.tv or check us out on the iOS store. In the meantime, I'll be back with more awesome videos from the world of product reviews and unboxings. I'm your host, Jason. Have a great day.